Honorable Sidaramaya, Chief Minister of Karnataka, Mr. Ramchandra Rahi, President of the Gandhi Smarak Nidhi, Dr. Uday Krishna, President of the Karnataka Gandhi Smarak Nidhi, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, namaste to all of you. It is my great pleasure to attend this exciting seminar, albeit virtually. Due to my prior commitments, I am sadly not able to join you in Bengaluru, a beautiful garden city, which has also become a world-renowned tech city. However, I was happy to accept the invitation to deliver this speech because of my long-standing love for India, as well as my lifelong respect for Mahatma Gandhi. At the outset, I extend my warmest congratulations to the Gandhi Smarak Nidhi on his landmark 75th anniversary of dedicated service. Before I get to the substance of my remarks today, I would like to first tell you a bit about the relations between Mahatma Gandhi and myself. I started my work as the eighth UN Secretary General on January 1st, 2007. And five months later, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution to observe the birthday of Mahatma Gandhi, which falls on October 2nd as the International Day of Nonviolence. This important resolution called upon the global community to commemorate this day annually in order to, I quote, disseminate the message of nonviolence, included, including through education and public awareness, unquote. Gandhi's philosophy, vision, and strategy of nonviolence profoundly influenced not only me, but many global leaders too, including Martin Luther King Jr. and Nelson Mandela. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, in the modern history of the world, Gandhi remains the greatest teacher and practitioner of nonviolence. He demonstrated the efficacy of this philosophy through his resolute leadership of India's hard-won struggle for independence from British colonial rule. In addition, his leadership inspired and still inspires countless of movements for change all across the world. Like so many people around the world, I have long admired and respected Mahatma Gandhi. I first visited Rajgat in 1972 when I was assigned to New Delhi as a young Korean diplomat. And in 2015, I visited Sabarmati Ashram in Gujarat as Secretary General of the United Nations. I was greatly moved and inspired by the ashram, by its ascetic simplicity and pervasive purity. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I was informed that the theme of this seminar is Mahatma Gandhi for the 21st century. The theme precipitates me to ask myself, as I am sure that it will cause all of you to ask yourselves, what are the major challenges and problems that we, humanity, are currently facing in the 21st century? And what are the main lessons we can learn from the past and the main opportunities in the present, 
which can help us overcome those aforementioned challenges so we can succeed in creating a brighter world for our future generations. In this respect, I'd like to share my reflections with you on three key challenges in the 21st century. The first, let me begin with the most pressing challenge, namely the climate crisis. Cascading climate change is a defining threat of our time. Indeed, if the world fails to reach the targets and timelines of the historic Paris Climate Change Agreement, the consequences will be simply devastating for the health and well-being of all of humanity, as well as our single planet. Climate change is also a threat multiplier that can disrupt ecosystems and economies alike, causing a crisis of environmental displacement on an uncontrollable scale. It can also trigger tensions related to food, water, resources, and more, both within and between countries. Governments, civil society, organizations, and businesses around the world have recognized the inherent dangers of climate change and the great urgency of coming together in cooperation and partnership to holistically address it. When India deposited its instrument of ratification to the Paris Climate Change Agreement with the United Nations on the auspicious day of 2nd October 2016, I said then, quote, what better way to commemorate Mahatma Gandhi and his legacy for people and planet, unquote. In this context, I call on the Indian government to demonstrate is elevated climate leadership by making further efforts to achieve net to zero emissions by 2050. The second challenge I would like to highlight today is a closely interlinked to the imperative of protecting the planet and its people through the achievement of the entire set of tasks of sustainable development. During my time as UN Secretary General, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the historic Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, in 2015. SDGs guide us as we strive to end hunger, empower women, reduce wealth disparities within and between nations, increase access to education and build effective institutions that serve the people. These goals apply to all countries. After all, even the richest have not fully achieved all the goals for all of their citizens. However, it is a matter of deep concern that the world is still far away from meeting the fast approaching deadline of 2030 to achieve the SDGs. Today, some 1 billion people still live in extreme poverty in different parts of the world, and more than 800 million people endure hunger and malnutrition. There were countries in Asia that not long ago were struggling with poverty and hunger. Today, these countries have made remarkable progress in lifting countless people out of abject poverty. India has also made considerable progress. I take this opportunity to commend India for its notable efforts. 
One task in this regard will become easier if we are guided by Gandhi's wise mantra, quote, Earth provides enough to satisfy everyone's needs, but not everyone's greed, unquote. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I now come to the third challenge. The 21st century has witnessed unprecedented progress in scientific and technological knowledge that promotes material prosperity, which is an indispensable human need. Yet, I often wonder with the sadness and anxiety why we have become poorer in spiritual knowledge, which is a requisite for peace, harmony, and happiness in our neighborhoods, communities, countries, and the world. Indeed, there is a great strength in diversity and countries that celebrate diversity, defend democracy, ensure freedom of faith, and embrace every individual are the ones that can guide the construction of a better future for all. I'm of the view that this is perhaps the most fundamental lesson that we all should learn from the exemplary life of Mahatma Gandhi. I firmly believe that everyone has a moral responsibility to act wherever they may be, and everyone has a part to play in addressing the biggest challenges we are facing now and fostering the creation of a brighter world. Let us expand our collective efforts to advance peace, sustainability, prosperity, and dignity for all. I reiterate my congratulations on the occasion of this timely seminar and wish you all a great success. Thank you, Tanya Ward.